Hello, I'm Nuala McGovern. Welcome to the Edinburgh Festival Fringe, the largest arts festival in the world. And I'm here for World Have Your Say, and we're asking, can comedy change the world? And to discuss it, I have four comedians, Des Bishop, Shappi Corsandi, Henning Venn, and Sarah Pascoe. But we're not alone. Indeed, we have 350 audience members that will be with us discussing it in that large blue tent. So, can funny, make a difference in the real world or should my guests just stick to the jokes we'll find out on world have your say <laughs> why we're here is we're talking about whether comedy can change the world des i'm going to start with you when i ask you that question what's the first thing that comes to your mind uh, can comedy change the world i mean the first thing that comes to my mind really is uh not in any great dramatic way uh you know but i but i do think you know, uh, somebody with an audience, uh, you know, somebody with a, with a power to influence minds in some way, shape or form can uh, change people, change a group of people in some way. And, and I guess in a tiny way, that's changing the world. It can definitely influence opinions. But I think in terms of that broad statement, can comedy change the world? I think if it can, it, it's a, a very small thing. Henning. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So I think it's absolutely right. There is, there is an audience. You can certainly can influence a mindset. Uh, in a certain way, how far that goes, who knows? So, uh, and I mean, you could do it at a broader level if you try and become institutionalized, like Beppe Grillo in Italy, setting up his own political party. But then, obviously, it's the question: Do you want to be under so much personal scrutiny of uh, standing ahead of a, a, a political party? So, but does comedy change the world? Well, it certainly does change the mindset to a certain degree. And uh, then, who knows where it goes from there? Sarah, when you went into it, was changing minds part of what you had in mind? No, not at all. I think if comedy had any power to change anything, wouldn't airplane food be better? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that shows you how little, actually. Wouldn't men and women be the same now? Um, I, think that, um, I think if you ask the same question about paintings, can paintings change the world? That would be exactly the same as comedy. Like, Guernica is an incredible painting about war, but it's never stopped a war and it's not enough on its own. So actually, comedy is a discussion between an audience and a comedian, and while that can involve a sharing of ideas and a flowering of ideas, that on its own is not enough to do any more than reflect what society was already kind of thinking. Um, when, when we are talking about changing specific issues with, with comedy, I think sometimes we mistake it with satire. Satire is crucial to attack those in power, yeah. to hold um, a mirror up to the status quo. Comedy, I don't believe, changes the status quo, and it doesn't set out to, it sets out to en entertain. You bring me to a clip that, I, that I'd like to play. We were, before we came on air, we were listening to the BBC News Bulletin, and I could tell Chappie that there was a lot that you seemed affected by when you were hearing those stories, and um, we listened to it all together in this room. Uh, one of the top stories, as it has been for the past month, has been Israel and Gaza. Um, the Daily Show's Jon Stewart, which is like a, a fake news channel, has been incredibly popular uh, originally in the United States and then also globally. He decided to tackle it while the conflict raged. Let's take a listen. So Israelis <laughs> seem to have a high-tech smartphone alert system. How are the Gazans notified? Basically, a small mortar explosion on the roof of a building, which serves as an Israeli warning of an upcoming <laughs> airstrike. Hmm. <laughs> So the Israeli military warns Gaza residents of imminent bombing with a smaller warning bombing. <laughs> An amuse boom, if you will. <laughs> and then, at that point, at that point, what are Gazans supposed to do? The Israeli military telephoned the neighbor to warn them to evacuate. Evacuate to where? <laughs> Have you seen Gaza? <laughs> Sarah, when you heard that, what oh, do you yeah. think? Um, well, so look, it's a really interesting example of what I would say is the danger of thinking that comedy is more powerful than it is, because comedy makes things palatable. Um, it's a relief of tension. You can talk about things that are very, very serious, sometimes so serious, actually, we think, I don't want to joke about this yet. I don't, I don't, my mind can't even take this in, so I don't want to laugh, which I think is what we're kind of feeling in the room now. But other times... It makes things so containable, but to listen to it is passive. So there are lots of people who find out lots of their news, for instance, from panel shows, but it doesn't agitate you to do anything. It just One of the reasons, like, for people like Boris Johnson and George Bush, they're so funny, it makes them actually even more dangerous. 
And I'll just say uh, the mayor of London and then the previous uh, oh, US yeah. president, okay, just yeah. for our global audience. <laughs> yes. uh, we might be familiar uh, with various characters in this room. But Oop. continue your so point. It so I, I, I don't think it doesn't, it doesn't mean that anyone can't make jokes about those things. I think it's really important that comedy does, doesn't have any censorship. And I think that because occasionally amazing things happen that are in very much in a grey area. But it also means that sometimes things will seem so serious that we don't think other people should be joking about them. But what I find interesting about John Stewart making that joke is uh, he, he's quite a strong supporter of Israel. And that, I hadn't heard that, but that is quite a departure. For, he was quite critical of uh, the Palestinians up until that joke. And what I do think is interesting about that is Americans tend to be quite pro-Israeli. And uh, I, I think there's an element of him sort of saying maybe there's a, an un, this is a not even-handed uh, way that Israel's dealing with Gaza. So I, I think actually in a way that it, he may have influenced some American minds to have a rethink about mm. how they mm. perceive what's going on in Gaza. Shafi, you're nodding. I thought, well, I, I thought what John Stewart did then was not funny. It was dark. You know, it, it brought a tightness to my chest and a lump to my throat. And the fact that he has been so vocally pro-Israeli, it makes me feel relieved that, okay, we can criticize this without anyone then accusing you of being anti-Semitic. You can... Well, we don't know what the reaction was well, to no. that particular <laughs> clip, but... Well, well, no, it's just because I know John Stewart's history in talking about this, this, um, this issue. And I think what he did was kind of necessary. What else? I mean, he could not ignore this. It's such big news. It is his job. He's a, it, th this was satire. This was dark. And I thought it was not funny, but pretty significant and important. And, and I'm glad he did it. It's interesting that you say you believe it, it was his job to do it. Yes. Explain Absolutely. that a little bit more to me. Well, he's not an acrobat. <laughs> he's not a slip on a banana skin, make you laugh clown. He comments on current affairs. He's a political mm. um, voice. And people do look to him for something beyond, you know, ha ha bonk. I don't even know what ha ha bonk means, <laughs> but I just mean sort of just surface laughter. People need him to comment on, on what's going on because that's massively why they watch him. I know we have a question in our audience here. Gentleman with the blue shirt. Hi. What's your name? Hello, Alan. Hi, Alan. Um, Shappy pointed out the difference between satire and ordinary comedy and also touched upon uh, darkness and lightness. And, for me, there's certainly a strand of comedy which is so dark that um, I'm not actually laughing, but I enjoy watching it. And, and you it's think still it's in a necessary? Comedy category, like Charlie Booker and Chris Morris, yeah. Um, mm. yeah. Amanda but Iannucci, that kind of stuff. Mm. I understand what you're saying. Henning, what about that dark comedy? Does that, is that perhaps more powerful when it comes to change? Well, what is the most powerful is probably the one that connects best with people. and. Mm. Uh, I, mean, I, I ever so slightly understand where this comes from. I slightly disagree with the idea that comedy has to, the idea of comedy is to make people laugh. Yeah, it is to a degree. But the main thing is that the people leave the theatre thinking that was, a that was a good evening, I'll come back next year. So that's the only way I can really measure it. Do people enjoy it to the degree or did the people get some sort of satisfaction out of the evening or are they intrigued in any, in any which way that they come back next time? So, I said, have to be a joke every 12 seconds. I don't necessarily think it has to. And, and you can talk to people, like say, for example, last year's show that was predominantly talked about how the monarchy should be abolished. And uh, that charity is all nonsense. And, uh, and that obviously, that, oh, that, 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 that people didn't come necessarily with, with the idea that they agreed with that. In the, but at, at least they went home having heard those opinions. When you did or didn't, and you can tell me what you did or didn't comment on this latest conflict, what were you thinking? Oh, well, I, I didn't comment on it because I just, I find it too complex and I haven't, I personally haven't found a way that I could express my uh, ideas that would be funny or in any way useful to other people. I find it very complicated. Um, I completely agree. I feel like I'm still trying to absorb information and listen to as many just to be as open as possible. Every time I read something, I find I'm swayed, and then I'll read something else and be swayed. Two years ago at the festival, I did a show, and um, things weren't quite... Obviously, there was still a situation, but I had a section of my show that was very silly and now sounds awful called Is Rallestein the Musical? And it was 10 minutes, and it was about how America were funding things. But it was very silly, and it was me trying to pitch it to the audience, and so it had puppies running on at the end, and it was all silly. Whereas if that was this year, I'd have had to cut that straight, gone. Mm. I don't think anyone wants to be flippant about it at the moment. I, 
Sorry, can I, can I just interject and say, I don't find that the, the situation between Israel and Palestine is complicated, yeah. but this particular action, I didn't feel that there was, it was, um, it was a complicated thing, that, that Israel is um, bombing the living hell out of defenseless people. That isn't a complicated issue. And I'm somebody who, I will support Israelis, you know, I, 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 um, I do not, I, I, I'm not, somebody who thinks Israel should be dismantled. I'm, this is wrong. And what's happened is because of, um, it's, been in the, um, it's been in the interest of both parties for people to feel that it's confusing. It's not. What is happening is plain wrong. But right now, as the conflict is happening, as people are dying, as we're seeing the bodies of children all over our Facebook and Twitter feeds, it is not the time. It's not personally the time. to make jokes about the political situation there.